YouTube, how the devil are you doing? It's Cool King checking in again. I hope that you are fine and dandy. So today we're going to look at this. This is the Arco 2 in 1 grinder from Goat Story that they have kindly sent to me after I backed it on Kickstarter. So without further ado, let's take a look and see what it is. Of course, you know what it is, because I've told you what it is, but we're just gonna take a look and see what you get inside the box and then go through a few of the features. So this is the box. We do have a picture of the grinder there. We've got branding. And then opening the box, we come with this axle lock tool, which shows us the burrs there. A little bit of a warning. And of course, the instructions, which normally I say we don't need, but I shall keep these just in case. Opening the box to look into the grinder itself. So the first item I'm going to show you is this. This is the hand crank made out of aluminium. You can see here there is a hex shape cut in there, whether it's quarter inch or not, I don't know. It looks a bit bigger, but that's what's going to sit onto the shaft of the grinder. And then we have this ball on the end, which is movable, which will give us a bit more range of motion. We have the actual grinder itself. Got a nice rubber sleeve on here, which is good for gripping. Obviously, if we're using it as the hand grinder, then it's going to be perfect for that. As I mentioned, the range of motion fits on there nice and snug. Looking down inside there, it is an aluminium body. We do have a couple of lugs at the top here, which we will come back to. You might see there are three holes here. This one here is where we put the axle lock tool to release the burrs. Minimal branding on the grinder itself. We've just got goat story there and then come down to the bottom where we have a magnetic cup, which is a lovely touch. So we can put that in any orientation. However, on the front here, you can see quite a few markings. So we have a white marking at the top here, which we shall come back to later. And then in the middle here, we have a series of markings. Obviously there's numbers and markings on this ring. And then we have zero, one, two, and three on the bottom here. This grinder has 240 different settings. So if I move this middle ring, there'll be 240 clicks. So at the moment we're on zero and we can see zero there. So that means we're on zero and zero. If I wanted to go for an Ibric coffee, they say zero, so this zero at the bottom here, and zero to 30 clicks. So anywhere in between here, which is now on 30, anywhere in between zero and 30 would be good for Ibric. Then for your espresso, anywhere from here all the way up to 60 which now you might notice that the line for zero is now missing. So anything after that, we're going on to one. So if I wanted to use this grinder to make coffee in my mocha pot, they do say that on the first ring between zero and 40 would be the ideal settings. So you can now see we've got rid of the zero line and we can see number one. So that means that we are now on the first ring. So then if I turn this round to 40, that should be the maximum for your mocha pot however it is only a guide and if we wanted to go to cold brew that's quite a way down that's on the third ring and it's between zero and 60 so anywhere basically for your cold brew here obviously depending on the beans and what you've got would depend on what grind you need it's all a bit of fun and games working out what you actually need anyway so i mentioned that the body of this is aluminium this at the bottom does have magnet rings but it is plastic doesn't really matter it's quite nice and then this is the electronic part of the grinder which feels quite heavy we have a metal base here and this is cold to the touch so that's metal i think some of this at the top is going to be plastic as you can see the hopper is open there we can close that and we have a simple on off switch at the top here so the motor that's inside here spins at 360 rpms and gives up to 65 decibels and it's available in 110 or 220 volt and i've obviously gone for the uk plug i did say that we'd come back to this white mark at the top of the grinder so looking on the body of the electric motor we can just see there there is a black mark in the middle and we have got these little cutouts and if you remember i mentioned that we have lugs on the grinder just give that a turn, line that up. And now the grinder is attached to the electronic body. This hopper, we can put 50 grams straight into that and close that so they don't bounce back up if they were to do that. They do say that you could do six batches of 50 grams of coffee 
and then you need to leave it a little bit just to cool down because it's not designed for that it is a single dose coffee machine it will work but obviously don't overload it so it's built as a two-in-one precision grinder the two-in-one is that obviously we can use it as an electric grinder or a hand grinder you can buy it just as a hand grinder on its own having the two gives you the luxury of being able to take this out with you or using it at home so it gives you quite a bit of freedom this grind setting seems to be easy and it looks to be precise you can see or i can see the burr set moving and speaking of the burr set it is a conical burr and it is 47 millimeters on the outside and 32 millimeters on the inner another interesting thing about this dosing cup is that it will fit in your 58 mil water filter so you can tip it straight in on the bottom here we've got the goat story logo and these men that i've already sort of mentioned it does give you a rough guide on there so you don't have to go squirreling away for any instructions or anything it's there for you to see so this is seven inches tall or 180 millimeters and it weighs 1.76 pounds or 800 grams so it is quite a heavy chunky monkey to fit in your bag but it is a quite a good quality item to have so if you was going somewhere still worth taking it with you maybe now looking at this this is a bit more of a chunky monkey this comes in at 6.2 pounds or 2820 grams and the height of it you're looking at 11 inches or 280 millimeters if you've got to fit it under something in your kitchen for example we can see under the side of the motor here this is the shaft that fits onto the top of the grinder and you can see the hopper opening there So there we have it, a quick unboxing and look at the Arco Tumon grinder from Goat Story. I was a super early bird backer for the grinder and I only paid 250 euros, which worked out to be about 211 pounds at the time. The current price for the two-in-one grinder, the electric and hand grinder, is 430 euros and you can buy just the hand grinder on its own for 195 euros. They are the pre-order prices, they will go up slightly if you want to buy them in the future. I had a good play with it, I ran quite a bit of coffee through it, about 300 grams to clean the burrs basically to sort of give them a bit of seasoning I suppose. And I had a play with coarse grind, fine grind, did find that the beans that I was using, the 30 to 60 mark that I mentioned on the zero, to get the perfect grind when I ran it through my coffee machine, it was actually about 28, 29 was the perfect sort of grind size for the particular bean I was using. So it does give you that creativity to sort of change your settings maybe on the grinder just to get the perfect coffee out of it. The beans that I did it with are beans that I've used for about a year, 18 months non-stop kilogram every month and it tasted totally different today when i've made it with the arco which i think is a good thing because it's given me a different dimension to to that coffee so i'm going to have a play about with some other beans that i've got and see if i can make them taste different as well if you have any questions about the grinder just put them down below i can get back to you as soon as i possibly can i'll link up here to some other videos that i think you might be interested in thanks for watching take care see you on the next one